Yeah, it felt great. Um, you know, I'm pretty proud of that accomplishment, and uh, that's something I can look back on and say that was pretty cool what I, what I was able to do here. And but I think this season and, and how everything's going, I think it's more important to focus on the team and, and what we can accomplish. So. I know you're a guy you don't like thinking about it and stuff, but when you think of some of the receivers that have played here and stuff, and guys that want to have good careers at the next level and stuff too. I mean, uh, are you able to take something personally with what you've done? Yeah, um, definitely, especially with those guys that came before me and were up on, the, you know, um, <clears throat> that record. I think, uh, you know, that's huge, and it's I'm, I'm very, very proud to be even in the same sense as those guys. How have you been able to, to be consistent? I mean, your, your freshman year, you only had five catches for 40 yards, and you come in the last couple of years. How have you been able to, you know, how did you get to the record? How were you able to do it? What you've done the last couple of years? Um, I think it was it was in me personally. I think it was more of a group effort. I think that you know, obviously, I've been a part of a lot of good offenses here and with a lot of good quarterbacks. So those guys have definitely been a huge part of it. <clears throat> um, obviously, you know, I couldn't have done it without offensive line, other receivers, and the running backs. So it's, it's more of like a team effort, a team accomplishment. I think. How difficult was it to not focus on the record, even though it, you know it was fast approaching and it was coming here? Um, it wasn't too difficult. I mean, it was kind of in the back of my mind, but not really. I was more focused on the game, I think. Well, I was going to say, I mean, you, with, with teammates, opposing coaches, you know, even your own coaches, guys always say, like, oh, wait, that's the guy that, that sets all these records? You know, they, they, they joke about you and just, you know, just being this undersized guy and all that stuff out of pads. How do you take that? I mean, do you take that in stride, or is that kind of, you think, is that a knock on you? <laughs> I don't think it's a knock on me. I mean, I know how I look and how, you know, the average football player looks, so. I don't think it's a knock on me. I mean, I kind of just look like the average Joe, I guess, and that's fine with me. How, how do you overcome that then? You know, I mean, like, you know, out the football field, you, you're just you're a different guy. Yeah, I guess I'm a different guy. I think I still have attributes that make me, you know, a good football player, whether it's not looking the part, but I, I guess I still, you know, know a lot about the game, so I think that's a good part. Breaking a record like this. Breaking a record like this, is it something that comes out of having a chip on your shoulder, or is it just something that, like you said, you're not even thinking about, it just almost came to you? Yeah, I don't really have a chip on my shoulder about anything, but uh, I think it more just happened. I don't know. Um, I think that, you know, I was more focused on about everything with the teams that I was on and being successful as a whole team that, you know, I was pretty lucky that it just happened. Currently on the TV broadcast, they were saying something about it. Like compliance issues, you haven't been able to get your trophy yet for the All Blue team. Like they weren't sure they could actually like legally give it to you. What's going on with that? Do you know about that? Or? Yeah, I'm not really sure. I didn't even know we got a trophy. Uh, someone told me the other day. Yeah, they had it. And they said like legally they weren't sure if they could give it to you yet. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so you didn't know about that? Okay. No. With the, you, you, I mean, you mentioned though, kind of people talked about you kind of football savvy. I mean, you were a quarterback in high school and you came here as a DB for a bit, right? And then obviously being great at receiver. How, how, what's enabled you to be able to do that? You know, I mean, make those transitions between positions and be able to do it well. Yeah, um, I came here as a safety, and then they kind of moved me right when I got here to wide receiver. Um, but I kind of had an idea that I was kind of on the borderline of those two. So I worked it a little bit. You know, just did some small stuff, mostly DB stuff. But then when I got here, obviously the coaches that I had helped me a lot. Um, <clears throat> Coach Prince helped me, and then. When Coach Allen got here, he, he did a lot of fundamental stuff to really, you know, kind of push him to that next level. Well. I think when the schedule came out, everyone said, okay, well, they can just get by BYU, and the schedule's going to lighten up. But all of a sudden, Wyoming, uh, this looks like a pretty tough game on Saturday. What, what do you see out of them? Yeah, Wyoming looks like a great team. And uh, obviously, they're undefeated in conference play, so uh, that's huge for them. And, and you know, we're really going to have to have a great week of preparation and really grind this tape to uh, come out with a win. They've obviously struggled the last couple of years, and here they are 5-2. I mean, I don't know if you've seen it in the previous games. What were they doing differently maybe this year? Why have they been able to get some more wins? Uh, I think that they just have kind of have a lot of momentum right now, and, and you know, a team with momentum is hard to stop. So <clears throat> we watched a little bit of film already, and their defense really flies the ball, and they're a physical team, so it should be a good game. You doing so, anything to prepare for the elevation up there? Uh, nothing specifically. No, not really. How much is that, you know, as a player, when you see, when you see a program like that kind of go from having the difficulty to see them doing well, I mean, like, you know, do you kind of, do you take notice and is that something that just kind of impresses you when you see some of those other programs kind of rise up after, you know, a couple of years of having down years? Yeah, it definitely does. Um, especially in the Mountain West, I, I love to see teams doing good like that. And obviously, you know, we want a very competitive conference, so it's good to see. A little late to the party, obviously. Yeah. Technical problems here. I uh, just want to ask you about surpassing Titus in that record. What's it mean? Uh, yeah, it means means a lot. I'm, I'm very proud of it. It's something that I can look back on after I'm done playing and, and say it was pretty cool what I was able to accomplish. But I think right now, 
uh, from a team standpoint, I think <clears throat> we're just we're concerned about what we can accomplish this season. In, in Thursday's game, Sean Monster had by far his best game of his career. How much did that help you guys? And what did you see out of him? And how cool was that to see him get involved like that? That was awesome. <clears throat> um, you know, we all know that Sean's capable of that. Everyone on the team, the coaches, everyone. We see it from him every day in practice, and for him to be able to just do that in the game was huge. And, and you know, he stepped up definitely. I was kind of sitting here with Jake Knight. You know, that, that games like that can kind of make help guys, you know, take that next step. Or you, you know, do you think you can do that with Sean? Because we've seen him in scrimmages and in practices. He catches just about everything. So now to have it be in a game, how much do you think that might help him? Yeah, it definitely will help him. And um, you know, those game reps are huge for guys with experience. Um, it's one thing to kind of simulate in practice, but the live reps really do help, and it gives the guy confidence. So, yeah, he should definitely be making strides. You had to come out of the BYU game late. Um, just an awkward fall, or what, what happened on that play that you can tell us about? Uh, yeah, I just got the wind knocked out of me. So it's one of those things. Piggybacking off that, uh, from Sean to Jake, uh, making an impact, obviously, that big catch move and change for you. Uh, how nice is it to see Jake making an impact on offense, and what do you see from him day in and day out of practice that leads to his performance on the, on the game? Yeah, that guy definitely deserves, you know, all the credit because uh, he, he does work pretty hard every day and he's taking all the reps, you know, and um, for him to go out and, and do what he does in practice on in the middle of the game, especially when we needed it most, that's huge. And, uh, you know, that guy, uh, he, he, he works his butt off every day. Harsh is saying that was the fastest he's run off of the catch. Have you seen him run faster? <laughs> uh, I mean, I knew he could run, but he really turned the Jets on there. So I thought he was going to. He just needed a couple more yards to get in the end zone, but uh, it was a good run. You know, with Wyoming coming up, obviously a huge game for you guys after two close calls down late in the game. Are you how quickly are you going to try to just put this one away, get ahead, stay ahead, and not put yourself in that situation again? Yeah, I, I think we definitely always want to start fast. Um, you know, we've we've been kind of going through some wolves on offense uh, in these games where we, we start out good and then we kind of dip down and. I think that uh, we talked about being more consistent throughout the entire game, so I think that should definitely help. How, how big was that? I mean, you guys hadn't even trailed until two games ago, and then they were in the fourth quarter trailing and needed to put a drive together, and you guys go 90 yards, you know, they're in the fourth quarter and to, to win the game. What, can, can you guys learn something from that? I guess that, that, that feeling and knowing that maybe if you get down again, that you guys have confidence you can pull it out? Yeah, I think especially last game, we were kind of shooting ourselves in the foot a lot of the time. Uh, we, we felt like we were stopping ourselves. And you know, for us to go 90 yards when we needed it most, it just kind of proves that we could have done that the whole time. And, and you know, I think that it was more just Boise stopping Boise. You guys have kind of one of those games every year where you have five, six, seven turnovers. I mean, this one you at least won. What, what happens? Is it just contagious when one of those games happen, or why does it just seem like when one of those games happen, it just snowballs? Yeah, it kind of just seems like the perfect storm sometimes, where one guy messes up, and then you know, you have another guy slip up, and and you know, the whole team's kind of. Seems like that they're in a huge lull, and I think that um, you no, know, we were able to kind of get out of that, and which was good, and we ended up getting the win. On the flip side, other turnovers. What's it say about this group's resiliency? A lot, you know. The the one thing about that whole, you know, all the turnovers and everything was uh, the effort was still there, which is obviously what you want, even though guys are uh, kind of making errors. But you know, as long as the effort's there, you can't really ask for too much more. How odd is this year been for you guys? I mean, you're undefeated, but you know you sit there and we you know, we talk about whether it's second half offense struggles and turnovers and stuff. And you guys still keep winning these games. What, what's it been like for you guys? I mean, no no game's really been the same for you. Yeah, it's definitely kind of been a roller coaster. Um, we've always kind of said you win the turnover battle, you win the game. Obviously, we haven't won too many turnover battles this year, but uh, you know we've been able to still win. So it, we're kind of you know living on the edge like that in that sense, but. Um, you know, if we start winning the turnover battle, we should really start putting teams away. Is that, I mean, how are you, how are you guys able to overcome it, do you think? You know I mean, the fact that you guys have been on the wrong side of it in just about every game, but you still win. I think just working in practice, um, obviously ball security drills and things like that, and on the defensive side, obviously, you know, stripping out the ball and, and creating turnovers in that sense. The, the two extra days off almost seemed like a mini buy kind of, at least for us. What, what was it like having, I think you guys had two full days off, right? And do you, do you feel any different on a normal Monday, maybe today, than the previous weeks when you play on Saturday? Yeah, I definitely feel more rested today. Um, it did kind of feel like a mini buy. It's nice to get those, those two extra days off, so it was uh, pretty relaxing. All right, guys. <laughs>